OK, so greetings, everyone. Welcome to the uh, second online journal club uh, that we're organizing here at the ESB. Uh, and here we highlight excellent publications written by ESB members in the past year. We organize this in the Science Communication Committee of the ESB, and we, de we do something very interesting, and is that we invite first authors of papers in the field of biomechanics uh, to explain the papers and that way we don't have to read the papers ourselves. So you're welcome for that. Uh, I'm Jorge Barasafano. I'm a postdoc at Kaulöven in Belgium, uh, and I will moderate this journal club together with Alessio Amicone here, a doctoral student at uh, Zurich in uh, Switzerland. And today we have the honor to have uh, Anna Ramella, PhD student at the Politecnico di Milano. And she's going to present her publication, Applicability Assessment for In Silico Patient Specific Tevar Procedures, published earlier this year in the Journal of Biomechanics. And the presentation will be around 20 minutes, and then it will be followed by a, by a Q&A session. So during the Q&A session, please ask any question you may have on the methods, the results, the implications of the work in the article. You can also give some constructive feedback about the way the study was conducted and uh, make some suggestions for future work and perhaps a collaboration if you're so interested. And just remember that this is a friendly environment and we all want to learn here. So uh, please mute yourself. Well, I think you can't unmute yourself anyways, uh, unless I allow it. So <laughs> uh, during the presentation and then after in the Q&A session, you can either write the questions in the chat or if you want to say it um, by voice, you can raise your hand and I'll admit you. So without further ado, uh, Anna, the floor is yours. And let me put you in the spotlight. All yours. Okay. Thank you, Raga, for the kind introduction. Uh, so sharing the screen. Okay, you see my presentation, right? Okay. Yes, perfect. So yes, there is just a small window on the bottom. If it's only me. Yes, this one. I don't know how to. I don't know how to remove it. Okay, maybe I, I share, I use the. I will go with the, the this one. Okay. So um, again, good afternoon to everybody. And as Olga said, I'm a PhD student from Politecnico di Milano. And I would like first to thank the European Society of Biomechanics for giving me this opportunity of presenting this paper that we published at the beginning of this year, entitled Applicability Assessment for in silico patient specific TVAR procedure. And it was published on the Journal of Biomechanics. This is a brief outline of the presentation. I will start with an introduction general on the model credibility, and then I will focus on my numerical methodology and on the aim of the paper. And then uh, I will go through the uh, material and methods and results and discussion section as following the uh, paper uh, scheme, let's say. So, um, in the recent literature and regulatory body publications, a strong emphasis is given to the role of model credibility and model reliability. The model credibility in general can be defined as the ability of the model to address a given question of interest or to predict a specific context of use. Here you can see a scheme that was provided by, uh, in, that was provided by the American Society of Mechanical Engineering which, uh, uh, let's say, uh, provide a framework that can be followed and should be followed to define the and to assess the model uh, credibility. As you see, demonstrating model credibility involves many aspects, starting from verification and validation of the model to an, going through an uncertainty quantification and an applicability analysis of the model itself. In particular, in this paper, we are we, in the paper I'm presenting, we are focusing on the applicability analysis 
that is, uh, as I said, an important um, aspect of the model credibility. And it is defined as the use of a computational model to predict a specific context of use supported by validation evidences. Uh, going a bit into the details of my uh, project, the context of use is the thoracic and the vascular aortic repair, which is a minimal invasive technique used to treat thoracic aortic pathologies. And uh, it consists of placing a self-expandable stand graft into the uh, aortic region pathological region to recreate, what's this? Sorry, <laughs> to recreate uh, a more physiological condition. In particular, this stand graft, uh, as I said, uh, is inserted in a minimal invasive way starting from the femoral arteries. And then once the proximal zone, uh, landing zone of the uh, thoracic aorta or at the aortic arches is, is reached, this stand graft is gradually uh, deployed. Stand grafts are composed of nitinol stands, which are sutured to a polymeric uh, uh, tube, which is uh, uh, the graft, which is made of uh, PET or PTFE. The TVR procedure has uh, a tactical success rate in the short term, which is very high, but in the long term, some uh, complications may arise, may, mainly due to the interaction between the device and the uh, aortic anatomy like the development of endolix or some consequences related to the device malapposition. And especially in this context, the patient-specific numerical simulations may play a role. So switching to the uh, numerical simulation, last, uh, in 2022, we published a paper in which we, are proposing, we proposed a numerical methodology which was validated and verified. And this numerical methodology was able to replicate the, both the stand graph model and the TVR procedure in penedalized uh, anatomy. In particular, this is uh, um, the, the, this numerical methodology started from the creation of uh, a device, starting from real device model. These devices were first recreated in terms of CAD model, and then uh, the uh, finite element domain was also reconstructed. In particular, this stand was discretized with uh, beam elements and the graft with membrane elements. And the node-to-node -node connection between the stand and the graft was also uh, imposed to replicate the presence of the suture point. Then uh, experimental uh, tests were carried out of nitinol stands and on graft samples and on the old device. And they were used to calibrate the material parameters, but for the nitinol and for the PET. But also uh, those tests were used to validate the device model. In particular, um, we, are, we carried out uh, experimental crimping tests. And by replicating this crimping experimental test with the, uh, the numerical model, we were able to, uh, to model the behavior of the device uh, and thus validating the device model. Also in the, into the device model, we included the uh, pre-stress feature because when we remove the uh, stand strut, the suture point between the stand strut and the graft to carry out a, a crimping simulation on crimping tests on single stand ring. We found out that the um, stand ring were larger with respect to the uh, suture diameter. So uh, this pre-stress feature was also included into the model. So once the model is uh, uh, validated, we move to the TVR procedure itself. In particular, uh, here yeah, we are using an analyzed aortic model, which was also modeled with uh, uh, rigid materials. And with this, uh, uh, this is a novel approach that we propose to replicate the stand graft implantation, which uh, started from, uh, it st it start from uh, a crimping simulation of the device. Then the device is tracked along the vessel center line until the proximal landings are near wrist. And then uh, it is gradually deployed uh, uh, into the aortic lumen. This on the numerical side, but also um, we perform experimental tests in which we um, actually a, a clinician uh, experimentally implant a stand graft into uh, an idealized aortic arch model, which is the same of the numerical model. And uh, this implantation was performed under a CT scan. And different CT acquisition at different steps during deployment were acquired in order to validate the numerical simulation. And these are the uh, validation results. On the top line, you see on the left, the stand segmentation. 
that is the stand segmented at different steps during deployment, and on the uh, right side, the same step, but on the numerical side. In the middle, you see the overlap between the uh, numerical and experimental uh, um, results in a qualitative way, but also for each stand strat, we uh, calculate the opening area and the error between the simulation and segmentation to, uh, let's say, furthermore validate the, um, also in a quantitative way, the, um, the device, the TVAR simulation model. And the errors that we get were below uh, 3%, much lower with, with other data that we found in the literature. Thus, we conclude that our methodology was validated into an idealized aortic arch. But then uh, if we move uh, uh, from idealized anatomy to a patient-specific case, can we apply and use this uh, uh, methodology? And the, the answer to this question can be given by the uh, applicability analysis. In particular, uh, a group by the FDA published this paper that you see in the slides. And uh, uh, in this paper, some steps are proposed that should be followed to demonstrate the applicability of uh, a numerical methodology, which was previously validated, to a patient-specific uh, case or to a different context of use. Therefore, the aim of this paper, was, the paper that we published, was to discuss and justify the credibility and the applicability of a patient-specific finite element TVAR simulation to replicate in silico the stand graft implantation. So uh, these are uh, the three main steps of the applicability analysis assessment. And the first one consists of describing the key players of the analysis, which are on one side the real world scenario and on the other side, the numerical models. Among them, the uh, context of use and the primary validation evidence are, uh, will be discussed together with their equalities and differences. So the context of use is the TVAR clinical intervention in a population of patients performed with any kind of stand graft on the real world scenario and the patient specific TVAR simulation on the numerical side. While the validation evidence, uh, uh, we, as a validation evidence, we chose the, um, the TVAR procedure validated in the, in the idealized anatomy that I presented uh, and discussed before. So then the second aspect uh, is, the second step is related to the uh, analyzing, analysis of the qualities and differences. So starting from the model side, the identical aspects between the context of use and the validation side are related to this kind of stand graph modeling. So in terms of mesh and material properties, in terms of uh, um, equalities are related also to the simulation steps. So in all, also in the patient specific case, the stand graft is first screened, then translated along the vessel sent line and then gradually released. And also the question of interest is the same because in both cases, um, we are interested in the uh, estimation of the final stand graft configuration. On the other side, differences between the context of use and the validation models are related to the aortic anatomy and material properties, because, uh, of course, in the context of use, uh, isotropic and uh, deformable and patient-specific anatomies will be used, uh, are related to the stand graph model and size, because the stand graph size is also related to the kind of uh, anatomy, and also the landing zone, because the landing zone of the device um, that is the position where the device should be uh, deployed depends on the location of the pathology, which diff is different for each uh, patient. Then switching from the model to the reality, the, uh, different as the aspects which are different between the validation and context of use are related again to the aortic anatomy and material, because for example, in the validation, we use an idealized and uh, rigid aortic model are related to the um, stand graph model because in the validation we use just one stand graph but potentially in the context of use any uh, commercial stand graph can be used. Also uh, the TVAR procedure is a bit different because uh, in the validation we just use uh, a, a portion of the aorta so uh, but, but in the reality the device is inserted into the patient starting from the femoral artery and then we are neglecting the presence of blood flow. So uh, given uh, these, uh, the key question of the applicability analysis is, 
since we assume that it is appropriate to model the uh, reality of the validation with the model of the validation, because uh, it was uh, validated and in the paper that uh, we published uh, in 2022. Is then also appropriate to, to use a specific model for the context of use to predict the reality of the context of use given the differences that I discussed before? To answer this question, I will start again by um, doing a recap on the validation evidence. In particular, we, with the model of the validation, we were able to replicate uh, the stand graft implantation in all the steps, but in particular uh, in the final configuration of the stand graft. And as in the model of the context of use, we are going to use the same material properties for the stand graft, the same kind of discretization techniques. We're following the same uh, um, steps for the uh, TVAR procedure. We can also say that uh, this, uh, um, this, this methodology can be applicable to a patient specific case. As a demonstration of this, we have carried out a pilot patient specific study in which starting from preparative CT images, we segmented the aortic anatomy and we include the vessel wall pre-stress due, due to blood pressure and we uh, carry out the, uh, the, the stand graft implantation simulation. And then for this patient, post we have also post-operative CT images. So from these, those images, we segmented the stand configuration and uh, like uh, as we did in the um, primary validation evidence, we compare the uh, simulation results in red with the um, segmentation uh, distance segmented from CT images, both in terms of qualitative overlap and uh, uh, quantitatively by analyzing the opening air error for each stand strut. In this case, uh, errors are a bit higher because uh, we are introducing uh, uncertainties, uncertainties mainly related to the uh, mechanical properties of the, the um, aortic wall, but however, still acceptable and in line with other uh, um, literature, uh, literature studies in which uh, um, th that calculate the same kind of error. So with this, we can conclude that this patient appli specific application overcome the differences between the uh, context of use and the validation, and it demonstrates the, ab the ability to apply this um, methodology to patient-specific anatomies. So I will move to the discussion, starting with this uh, uh, famous aphorism, which says that all models are wrong, but some are useful. And in the uh, role of the uh, model, um, numerical modeling, the model credibility is foremost importance, is, is of foremost importance, especially if the model will be used for uh, clinical applications and clinical predictions. And again, the model credibility is the ability to answer a question of interest or predict a specific context of use. Within the credibility assessment, uh, as I discussed before, the assessment of the model uh, applicability is a fundamental aspect to justify the use uh, of a numerical model in a specific context of use. And to do this, uh, and we use this framework for the applicability assessment to uh, demonstrate the, the, um, the use of a numerical methodology which was previously developed for uh, idealized aortic uh, anatomy, the use of this methodology to patient-specific cases. In particular, uh, the, the applicability is assessed by analyzing equalities and differences between reality and models of the context of use, that is the TVAR procedure in a population of patients, and analyzing uh, equalities and differences between the reality and the models of the um, primary validation evidence, which again is the uh, TVAR simulation in, in tonidalized uh, anatomy. Then, um, as the uh, this applicability assessment framework is quite a, a theoretical uh, demonstration, we carry out also a patient-specific case study in which we practically uh, demonstrate uh, uh, with the simulation what uh, was argued uh, in the um, applicability assessment analysis. With this pilot patient specific study, um, we demonstrate that the um, procedure is applicable to patient specific cases and it is demonstrated also by validating uh, the simulation results with post-operative CT images. So in the end, this developed in circo methodology starts for replicating the TVAR procedure in, uh, in, in virtual patients. 
up to now, we are now we are carrying out many uh, patient specific simulations with different uh, aortic anatomies. And for uh, the patients for which we have post-operative CT images, we also we are also um, comparing the simulation results with the post-operative CT data to uh, furthermore demonstrate and furthermore stress on the credibility of this numerical methodology. Because in the future, uh, a more lar larger population of aortic anatomy with different pathologies can be treated towards in silico clinical trial, but with this device or but with the uh, other commercially available stem graft. So um, with this, I concluded my presentation. I would like to thank again the uh, European Society of Biomechanics for this opportunity and the, um, my supervisors and all the other authors of this paper, both from Politecnico di Milano and Policlinico di Milano Hospital, and you all for the attention. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, it's very nice presentation and work. Uh, so I think that we we can move to the question and answer session. I just quickly want to remind that uh, we are recording the presentation and without objection, we also would like to record the discussion uh, and then everything will be available at the ESB YouTube channel. Uh, if you uh, object to record, the discussion, please just tell us in the chat and we stop recording. Um, yeah, as already uh, mentioned before, you can indicate in the chat if you have question, uh, we will then give you the floor after, you can raise your hand. Uh, if you feel uncomfortable, just please feel also to type the question and remind that we want just to create a supportive atmosphere uh, from which we, could, we can all learn. So yeah, the question and answer session is open. In case no one has an answer, I can start maybe. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, thanks again. I was like very interested in the work. Um, I wrote down some questions, maybe some related to the previous part and uh, like the model in general. Uh, I was like more interesting, like how do you uh, manage to model the the rings of the metal span part with the um, with basically with the with the graft part. Like do you use a special contact model? Everything is moving together. I saw from the simulation, and so which kind of contact uh, model did you use for this part? Okay, yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, okay, um, I go. I was quite quite fast on that part, but uh, the stand was modeled with the beam elements, so one of the elements, and the graft with membrane elements, and to re to reproduce their contact, we um, do a merge. On the node, on the on the two components, so there was not a re real contact, but the components are actually linked together, because um, we replicate uh, the presence of the sutures, so the the distance between uh, two nodes is like the one uh, that we found that respect the distance of the suture point, but uh, we use a merge merging technique between the two. Okay, thank you. And also, like, so in this study, uh, you only use one patient, like one patient specific data or more than one? Uh, you mean in the applicability paper? Yes, exactly. For now, yes. Yeah, in that paper, we just use one patient specific anatomy because at that point we were just um, seeing if. Uh, the numerical methodology was able to predict the uh, the simulation in that in that patient specific anatomy, and then as it worked, uh, we uh, then move on uh, to other specific patient specific applications. But yeah, for, for that paper, only one case was published at that time. Yeah. So the anyway now. Uh, the results are still very good and promising, right? I mean, I imagine yes. Yeah, we are carrying out uh, other additional simulations to prove the uh, reliability of this model. So we are furthermore uh, trying to validate again these uh, these simulations to 
yeah, to make it more credible as possible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very nice work. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a question here. Um, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, just a quick uh, questions, uh, similar as Alessio's uh, questions. Um, so he mentioned the number of samples. So you said you were using one, but you're planning on using more. Is there any guidelines on how many you should use, like in general, or is it uh, free? Okay, thank you for the question. Actually, in the paper that we followed, there was no guideline, or it was not neither mandatory to um, to show a patient-specific application. But we decided to add uh, uh, this patient-specific uh, uh, modeling to um, to give an additional validation evidence to the um, to, to the paper that was not the uh, the primary one. It was not the one that. Uh, support the the use of the numerical model because it is uh, the the final goal of the paper. But then, uh, um, once the applicability was demonstrated, we decided to use uh, and to show that uh, actually it was not just uh, in theory uh, credible, but it was also in in the practice. But um, I don't see any. I I think that there were no um, suggestion on the number of. Uh, patient specific applications for uh, the applicability assessment of course uh, if you increase the number then the credibility of the model is more and more proved so I yes <laughs> yeah thank you and well done again because it's uh, it's really thank nice uh, work i was also wondering uh, because we don't see a lot of studies like this and how difficult is it to implement this model is it just um, quite straightforward or does it require a lot of additional work uh, to have this uh, methodology? You, you mean the numerical simulation of the TIVA in general or on the applicability? No, more the applicability, all the framework and uh, yeah, the different validation steps that you had to do. I, I think that um... It's quite a long process because uh, uh, on our side, we want to be sure that each component of the models, both for the stand, both for the graph, both for the old device and both for the old procedure was uh, uh, credible. So we perform like a, a different step of uh, uh, validation and, and verification. So uh, I would say that it's quite a, a, long, a long process, but uh, then once it's done, it is credible and you, you can you can use it. So, yeah. yeah, I completely agree on the, on the interest of using this uh, kind of uh, process. Well, thanks again for the presentation. Thanks to you. Um, in, in the chat, uh, Francesco Migliaracca is asking, um, I would like a comment on the assumption of the rigid wall for validation against the compliant wall for reality. Okay, so thank you for the question. And okay, in the um, valid primary validation evidence, we decided to use uh, a rigid wall uh, our six model because the focus of the validation evidence was on the uh, stand graph modeling itself. So uh, on the uh, correctly replicating all the steps necess necessary to reproduce the TVAR procedure in the uh, in silico field. Then when switching from uh, um, primary validation evidence to patient specific application, the, um, the rigid wall assumptions for the Arctic wall is no more uh, uh, reliable. So uh, we use uh, uh, deformable material properties. And of course, uh, this is one of the main differences between the primary validation evidence and the um, context of use. But uh, um, as we discussed in the paper, the, the most important steps for replicating the standgraft implantation are uh, um, related to the correct, correct 
uh, replication of these 10 graft uh, uh, deployments into the aortic anatomy. And then uh, these, uh, um, these assumptions, this difference was uh, um, also validated with the post-operative uh, uh, CT images comparison uh, for the patient specific case. So um, in general, the old framework was uh, also validated for the patient specific uh, application. I don't know if I reply, I reply the question, but I hope so. I saw that he was still typing something else. So maybe he was <laughs> a follow up question, Francesco. I've, by the way, I've, uh, ah, there, there it goes. By the way, I have allowed everyone to unmute themselves if you want. So if you have a question, you can just unmute. But the co author, the second author of the paper is not convinced yeah. and he still has another <laughs> question. I know it, it, I, I can do the some question. Of course, I, I just typed that. So as co-author, I shouldn't do any question, but just to, as I know, uh, the work done by Anna and so that the work done is also is taking account other things. So I think it's uh, useful for, for the audience here also to, to, to know. So this method has been validated with one step. So if someone else wants to redo or so it's enough to use this material property. So you have to restart for each model of the stand graph all this procedure to have a validated model. Of course, if you uh, change the stand model, you are uh, not sure of the of the material properties. So you have to uh, redo all the validation and verification uh, activities. So starting from material properties calibration to device model validation and also uh, demonstrating the, uh, the applicability of, uh, of the use of that device to, uh, to patient-specific applications. Yeah, for sure, this, this is an activity that um, should be done when something changes. Okay, this yeah, step, of this yeah, this step no, I agree uh, with you. So, but okay. this is something that so should be clear. So you cannot just take yes. the, the results of this worker if you're using something different. So this might be helpful for those who want to use this model, it's okay, but otherwise, so you need to read that. And if I'm allowed, just a final question from my side, so, and then I apologize. So I type the question, but I do the question as well. So now you have a validated model. So how far are you from a, a clinical application with this model? Uh, I would say that, um, Matt, more uh, this model can be ready for a clinical application, but maybe I would say that more uh, um, patient specific simulations and uh, additional validation steps uh, can be um, should be followed and should be uh, performed before uh, uh, using in the clean daily clinical routine of this methodology because there are many aspects that uh, can be taken into account, like I don't know the presence of calcifications, the presence of uh, thrombine the aortic models, which is something that uh, may happen and that should be studied and included in the model. So we are on the way of using these on the clinical uh, daily routine, but um, it still needs to be uh, further more validated. Thank you, Anna. Sorry for making Thank questions. <laughs> uh, forgive me. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question, by the way. Yeah, so maybe maybe uh, insisting a bit on this uh, application to the real clinical world, uh, because you, before you said uh, to our release question uh, that it takes a long time to to do this um, uh, assessment, right? Uh, so if we're thinking of um, Let's say if if other um, hospitals or, or labs or whatever that uh, when they're planning one of these uh, sur surgeries or interventions, I would say um, to include this assessment in their in their in their workflows. Uh, it right now it's at a stage where it's let's say a bit complex. Um, you will always need like some sort of mechanical engineer there involved, right? Is there a potential for let's say? Uh, user friendly size everything in a way that I don't know medical doctors could <laughs> could 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 use it also or yeah for sure it's a long process let's say to get the final validated methodology but then the simulation itself uh, uh, so starting from the uh, 
having the anatomy from CT images and having the, the uh, selected device, then um, that simulation can be performed uh, in a few hours. And then, uh, you know, if a, doc if a doctor may uh, re require to have uh, to, to simulate one patient specific uh, condition, the, the results uh, to that doctor can be provided one working day, starting from the CT, CT segmentation to the uh, stand graft uh, implantation. Then, of course, it, each model is a bit different from the other, so uh, it depends on the uh, clinician request, but then potentially in a few working days, uh, the results can be provided to clinicians. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is uh, um, a, a tool that is uh, we are using in the research field, yeah. but it's uh, let's say that the procedure uh, for each patient is quite uh, always the same. So it's something that can be right. automatized. Yeah. The important thing is that uh, um, if, for example, this tool is used for uh, a clinical planning, then uh, uh, the discussion with, with clinicians uh, is, uh, uh, is of foremost importance because, of course, we are not uh, clinicians. I mean, we have some idea on, on how to perform the procedure, but then uh, Knowing which is the real clinical question is uh, important. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Silvia. Okay, any more questions, everyone? Everyone is now allowed to do everything. A mute, to turn on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Not present, but... Okay. Okay, well, if there are no further questions. Um, so we can then uh, close the session of today. So thank you very much, Anna, for presenting your work, for thank answering you. all the questions uh, very nicely. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. It was a pleasure for me. Um, yeah. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, uh, all of all of you who popped up in the in this seminar. Uh, I hope it was uh, interesting. Thank you, Alessio, for for managing the Q and A, and also I think special thanks to Aureli, who has uh, who's the one who has been behind everything. So this is happening because of you. So thank you, <laughs> uh, and thank you, everyone, and we'll see you again in the next Journal Club.